my background and arrow is probably most expert has the most expertise in democratic education but we go beyond that and yeah. the commonality we talk about is a learner centered approach yeah which goes yeah. way beyond democratic and it can be montessori it can be waldorf it can be you know homeschooling and so on as long as the basic thought is you're going to build on the interest of the student rather than do an imposed top-down type curriculum right right and i I would even say that some people call that learner directed you Mm -hmm. know and we've used learner centered because it's it's a little more encompassing but but some people would say oh that's learner directed because the learner is really driving you know what's happening and i think that's where we kind of fall in is that like Jerry said, you know, we're inclusive of anyone who really wants to get behind that idea Mm -hmm. and, you know, wants to try it out, wants to whatever, you know, wants to engage with it. And that's, that's the key to all of it really is that, you know, it's about the learners Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of great philosophies out there and a lot of great kind of ways to do things. But if, if that's at the center, that's a, to us, that makes the, that's what makes the difference. Right. Like you were yeah. talking about going to some things that are in mainstream, it's not that way, right? It's not learner right. directed. It's not even learner centered, right? It's not anything about it. It's about, and maybe, you know, it's learner centered to the degree, well, you have an IEP, you have an IEP, right? And those are fine. And those are, those are, there's nothing wrong with that, but, but that's still not learner centered. It's basically saying, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. here's what you need to do in order to work well in a conventional system. <laughs> like, right. That, right. That's, that's what a lot of those things do. And, and again, you know, it doesn't mean that students shouldn't get support. It just means that when you're doing it from a learner directed approach, it's a whole different set of things that you're working with. Let me give you an example. When I was uh, mm-hmm. just visiting North Star last week and what, and one of the students said to me, that it's really there where, you know, when, when they're there, they're not, they're not forced to go to classes, right? They're not forced to do that. You know, there's a schedule of things that you can learn about, but they're not forced. And one of the things student, and I'm paraphrasing here is basically that because of that, they're learning so much more because mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're engaged in things that they really want to know about and they really want to learn about. And even from there, they've realized that they have other interests. Right. So, so it's that kind of idea or starting from that standpoint of being learner directed. Yeah. And that's, that's where some of my, I have a new book out and, and so really trying to bridge between that, you know, learner directed, learner centered, teacher centered and saying, okay, there's a, there's a spectrum there, but are, are there ways to really, you know, dig deeper and, and have an understanding of there are ways that teacher centered is fine you know, under certain circumstances, but what are those circumstances? <laughs> and, and so that's, that's an interesting challenge. And, and that's where I think the, the recognizing, like, like having the openness to say, if you're learner centered, that's great. Let's, let's talk. And then trying to find what is it that brings us together? What really unifies our practice and being clear about, you know, learner centered versus learner directed, both are great. But there's something, and and then my work is really getting at really understanding what are the, as long as we're supporting the students and and the teachers, then what does that look like? And and it will be an interesting empirical question as to how teacher centered, how well supported is that? It it may not work very well for five year olds, <laughs> but it works differently for eighteen year olds. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't agree with that, of course. Uh, And the reason why I don't agree with this, I think five-year-olds are more aware of the fact that they should be controlling their education than 18-year-olds. And they do, in fact. Right, right. And and I I remember once when there was a school that we had helped to start in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to come over there and talk about democratic process Mm. and so i was driving over and then all of a sudden it occurred to me hey wait the oldest person there is five years old right so am i gonna i'm probably gonna have to give them the curriculum and whatever Mm. the agenda whatever 
And I got there and I'm walking in and there's one kid screaming, mommy, and walking in. I said, oh, wow, what am I going to do? And then they are all sitting at a table. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, there's a couple of basic reasons why you might want to have a democratic process in a school like this. And one is that you want to discuss something that might be a problem in the school. Another is something that might be good for the school to do. All the hands went up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and instantly we had our agenda. One girl said that she'd heard that there was a problem with chocolate, that it had a caffeine-like thing in it, and therefore probably kids shouldn't have it after noon. Mm. <laughs> she was four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And another, so, so this, this is the kind of thing, yeah, they, they got the idea immediately. Right. I think young kids do absolutely get it. It makes sense to them. That's how yeah. they've been learning up to that point. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.